What do you think of Javon Kinlaw's resurgence? Is it surprising to you? Um, it, in a way, no, right? Because we've talked about this in the show before. There's always, with the Niners, they always seem to get the best out of players when they're in, like, contract year and the players got to have it. And, like, I think I was watching the show with you and your father, and I think your father said, Javon is like, I, th I thought he was playing for his career. I think your father said that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's funny when players are put in this situation, right? How then they, they, they'll succeed. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's surprising in the way that I wasn't necessarily sure about his knee, but it's not surprising because the Niners seem to get the most out of players when they're in this situation where they need to perform. Um, we've seen it happen before with, with, with others. Um, so in that regard, no, not right. What's interesting about the Kinlaw thing is if you, if you haven't watched and you just looked at the box score, it wouldn't really indicate a resurgence. Kind of the same. He doesn't have any quarterback hits. He doesn't have any sacks. He has two tackles. But if you have watched, you notice that he's caving in the pocket and creating pressure. What are you seeing on film from Kinlaw? I think it, I think exactly that. I think he's he's caving the pocket, creating pressure. Wilkes is. It looks to me that Wilkes is specifically installing five D line fronts for Thank him you. to to use him. Um, Thank you. And he is, and we we saw that from right from the get go from early on. Um, he's been able to use his size where like how you want him. He's their, he's their biggest, he's their biggest guy. He's and he's been, I, I think he's been pretty effective in the run game. Um, so, and I think that was their whole intent, right? The whole, if you remember back to when they traded for Buckner, there was like rumblings like, Hey, the Niners want to get bigger inside. Right. And then mm -hmm. they traded Buckner and they drafted Kinlaw who was what uh, I, I don't know if he's bigger at the time, but he, I think he's is he listed at three twenty now. Mm -hmm. I, he might be a little bit smaller now, but yeah, yeah. But he, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. Yeah, he is. Um, and so, I, I think, like you said, he, it's not a box score thing, but when you watch the tape, he's playing really well. I think what's interesting about it, his resurgence is, I think Steve Wilkes gets a lot of credit. Now, the knee staying healthy. It had been hurt for so long, but at the same time, you're thinking he's young. He just needs like some good luck. So I, I don't know if you're, if I'm surprised or not that his knees holding up, but it's encouraging and it's a good thing. I think what's interesting is how Steve Wilkes is using him. This reminds me of Solomon Thomas with Robert Sala. High pick didn't work out. I used to talk to Robert Sala on the phone and give him ideas because I'm so smart. And I was like, Robert, why don't you try? Wait. Have you given him any ideas lately? No, I'm leaving him alone. He's in <laughs> hell right now. Poor guy. So I'm like, Robert, and he saw Solomon Thomas over there. I'm like, why don't you put Solomon Thomas at nose tackle in a five-man front on a pass rushing down so you can get him a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a guy he can beat? Like, I'm, I, I'm sure Solomon Thomas can beat a center one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't think that Robert Sala ever took any of my suggestions. I'm not sure why he talked to me on the phone to begin with. I think he, we're just, he liked talking to me. But, I mentioned it to him. He, I don't think he ever did it. It's exactly what Wilkes is doing with Kinlaw. Like, if you put him at three technique in a four-man front, I I don't know. We'll see. I mean, he, he still has to prove himself. But in a five-man front where he's one-on-one -on -one against the center, there's not many centers who are physically imposing enough to, to block him. And I saw it in training camp. When they would do one-on-ones, he was going against centers playing nose tackle, and I could kind of see the thinking. And I think it's really smart on Wilkes' part. I don't know that you, I know that one of the one of the tactics I know that I've used in the past and and I know other defense corners in the high school level use is when you get a new center in high school or a center you don't feel as good you put a player that is far superior on him and just try to get him to freak the hell out and starts fun, fumbling snaps and all that stuff so um obviously like not the same thing cuz I these are still NFL players right but you know, if you got, got a guy, yeah. I mean, like, it's tough for Javon Kinlaw when he doesn't have his pad level down to just physically manhandle, overpower starting NFL guards. Those are big, big guys. I mean, he learned that the hard way with Lakin Thomas in, in practice, but I do think a guy like Kinlaw of his stature and build and power 
can just manhandle most centers, even with high pad level. And I'm not saying that's the only way they're using him, but it seems like a good way to get his confidence up, man. Just whoop this dude's ass. I also think, I also think from just even just outside of thinking outside of Kinlaw, I think maybe some of the idea behind it is like, Wilkes might be saying, all right, we're matching your guys up front big, big for big. So now if you don't match us big for big, you're going to, are you going to put a, have a back to block Kinlaw or, or, or an edge guy, Armstead or, yeah, or Hargrave, Drake Jackson. Yeah. So he's he's kind of, he's kind of ensuring some one-on-one ma- some one-on-one matchups because he knows other those big yeah. bigs have to handle bigs have to handle bigs you know um yeah so i think that's that might be part of why he's doing that as well uh but again but it, it's great from a humanity standpoint great for kinlaw uh you know it should he probably won't get the contract for the, with the niners right but he will get it with if this continues he will get it with somebody mm-hmm. um it's not gonna be a javon hargrave uh hargrave deal but it, it It'll be enough to uh, support his life. I went to UCLA, but I live in the Bay. So when UCLA comes to Cal to play football, I like to go to the game. But last time I had a really frustrating ticket buying experience because I couldn't find last minute tickets. So I bought scalp tickets and they were too expensive and they weren't good and I had a bad time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I'm browsing through the app on my phone right now, and I see tons of 49ers tickets, plus tickets for really cool events in my area, such as Chris Tucker and Doja Cat. Here's what I like about the Game Time app experience. Last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area, views from all seats in the venue, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation guarantee, job loss protection, you get the picture. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees and you can buy tickets in literally seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code IGGY for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code IGGY for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. It's a great story. I mean, he was really he was really walking through the valley of the shadow of death for the last two years. I mean, his career was on life support. His career was in a coma for like two years. And all of a sudden, he just pops up like the undertaker. And he's making plays. <laughs> so I think it's cool. He Dude, really had to bide his time and be patient, grit his teeth, and now like his life is rolling again. Good for Javon. It might it, it, the the whole Javon Hargrave deal uh, might have had a played into that in the sense that right. like now they have a starting defensive tackle where they don't have to just throw Javon out there even when he's not ready or Good so point. like it's not you're, they're not putting so much pressure on him where like, all right if you got to you can't play if you got to sit out for a couple games then sit out. It's not going to kill our rotation. Obviously it will hurt the rotation, yeah. but we're not going to lose a starting defensive, defensive lineman. Right. So. Yeah. And um, this year he's playing 37% of the snaps, which seems to be a good number right now. Great. Now I have to Photoshop Mook dog on the undertaker's body. LOL. It's a good image, isn't it? It, it is. is. Brooks. It is. JT says you do anything for the upcoming 69 K nice subs. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Taking it in stride. Scribe Mind says, uh, nearest Super Bowl comp is Russ. Young, run-first offense, quick and undersized. Russ is bigger arm, but it's not like the arm. It's the play calling. Yeah. I yeah, yeah, I think... Yeah, I can could, I could see it. Like, there's not exact perfect comparison, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. yeah. I see it. 